Hello and welcome. I'm Ginger Bill and today we're talking about the Carbon Programming Language. In my previous video, um, I was talking about my first impressions of the Carbon Programming Language and going through the design spec and comparing it to my programming language, Odin. Now, Odin is a fully fledged general purpose programming language with the distinct typing for high performance modern systems and data oriented programming. It's an alternative to C uh, for the joy of programming. And again, it's a big language now, it's been used, it's a very small language, but it's been used in production now for us at Django FX um, for working on Embergen and Liquigen. And these are real-time fluid simulation software. Embergen is for creating fire and smoke and explosions in real time, real time that is, uh, for the game and film industry. Um, we are doing loads of stuff here, so if you're talking about games, you can do all your nice little explosions as such, generate all your flip buttons and sprite sheets and stuff. And again, you're in good company, loads of other companies are using it. So you can show that Odin being used to make um, Embergen or also now and the upcoming Liquigen is very good. So clearly I know a little bit about um, language design and compilers in general. So if you want to watch my first video, there's a link in the description below um, or the doobly-doo. So make sure you watch that before watching this. It will make things a lot much clearer. So the Carbon language, um, as I was talking about in the previous video, uh, was seems to be created from many of the people who are on the C++ committee Many of them are Googlers, as in they're working at Google, um, and they were kind of fed up with the way, the direction that C++ was going, and th they wanted to make some ABI breaking changes to increase performance, but the they couldn't get those changes through, so they were effectively gone like, right, we're going to have to just make our own language, which is okay, fine, and it's talking about all this here and going through. So as you can probably guess with the title of this video, I am trying to figure out. Who is this language for? And they are they, they do say in their FAQ who it is for, and it's kind of obvious who it's for. Like for instance, they can't improve C++ as they explain, that's why they created this language. They didn't want to fork C++ because they didn't want to cause too much confusion because it wouldn't be, therefore you'd have a language that looks like C++ but doesn't act like it. Um, they also explain like, why can't I use another language like Rust or um, Go or any other language they're talking about here like Java or Kotlin or Go or whatever thing. And they said, well, use them. If you can use them, use them, do not use our carbon. Which is like, okay. But they do explain that the whole point they're using is they want a language. It's for organizations that heavily depend on C++. For example, projects have a lot of C++ code or mainly use third party C++ libraries. And then they, and that since sense they want this, this is why they have the bi-directionality of the interfacing between the languages. They have both, um, you can import C++ libraries, but you can also import Carbon libraries from C++. And that's kind of why they're trying to do it that way. Now, to me, it, it seems very much like, okay, so why is it worth it to use Carbon? Really, why why is it worth it to use Carbon when I can just do the stuff staying up in C++? It may be a little bit more not as nice to use because of maybe the semantics or mainly the syntax in many cases, especially with how the templates work. But why? What is the? Why would I use carbon? And I might have been struggling my brain over this um, all overnight. I've had a good sleep on it, and I'm still struggling. I'm not sure who this is for. For instance, um, it it doesn't actually improve many things in terms of safety. It does to a certain extent. Like for instance, move semantics aren't just things that just added on anymore. They are part of the core language. Um, it does have some basic built-in types for slices, arrays, and strings now, which are a lot safer now than just using pointers everywhere. From what I can tell, there's no pointer arithmetic in this language either. So in some most cases, it is safer by virtue of just having a better type system. But because it's doing the incremental improvements, it's trying to do that. So it's not trying to compete with Rust, is the first thing. It is just, I, I'm struggling to who is this for. So re regarding all of this, um, I was watching earlier uh, Rene's talk about here. I'll put a link in the description below for this as well. And he's just talking about the video. Now, I actually disagree with uh, Rene here about the, the language. He complains about, like, why are we so many more languages? Just stop trying to reinvent the wheel and it's not invented here syndrome. And he complains about people doing this. Firstly, I completely disagree with him this, on this. I do not mind people making better tools for them if they want better tools. The tool set that we have at the moment is very limited and awful. Like As I said in the previous video, if you wanted a manual memory managed language for systems and applications development, 
you pretty much have, I would say, we'll say, we'll say it was t t 20 years ago, you only had C, C++, and Pascal, or Pascal variant, I mean. Now, if you look at it, even, let's say, 10 years ago, you had C++, C, C++, and, oh, Pascal again. And maybe Rust, maybe Rust. But um, that's great. But the thing about Rust is it mainly has many different things. It's mainly focused towards safety, not performance, because safety is its primary concern. And I think that's perfect for what Mozilla was trying to do, and it's fine. I have many gripes about uh, Rust, by the way, and I have many criticisms of it in general. I will not, not discuss that today. I'll probably do that at a later date, but that's absolutely fine. But Rainier here is more of a... He, he's just saying, stop, we need to improve the tools we've got. And I'm like, my view, this is why I created my own language. The tools cannot be improved if you're building on faulty foundations. To me, you cannot fix C. C is fundamentally broken. Um, and to fix it would mean requiring just making a new language. I tried to do this back in the day. So I had a talk. Um, this is when I was saying my introducing the, like when I first started doing programming language, and it was just me just showing my little experiments. But the reason why I even started doing this is I was very inspired by Sean Barrett's um, video. Again, I'll link all this into the description, don't worry, um, about the advice for writing small programs in C. And this video here by Sean Barrett, very good thing to watch, I recommend. He kind of just flicked a, a light switch in my head and pretty much said that a lot of the issues with C is mainly lacked due to the lack of a decent core library. Um, but also then to get around many of the issues, you're going to have to do many of these hacks in the C type system. And I started experimenting with Odin, not even before Odin, I tried to make an augmented C. I tried to do um, adding new features to C to make it better. So I tried adding slices, I tried to add proper string types, tried all these features. And then it helped a lot, by the way. I did the first statements. I did many of these different things to my augmented C compiler. But at the end of the day, it turned out that loads of things were having even more issues. And it was like, look, I can't just fix C, C is broken. So I had to make my own language, which is why I went to do Odin in the end. And it's been a much pleasure as well. Not even just that sanity of life, production, performance improvements. There's, everything is just better in general for me, for my domain. And we're just debating about high performance systems. So especially like game development, it'll be application development, again, Empergem development. We are doing stuff for high performance. Now, for going back, uh, back, sorry, going back to Rene's talk here, the other thing he was complaining about is like, why is the loads of languages from Google? And like, he also said very briefly, but I don't think he may have understood what he said here, or maybe I'm just very cynical. Um, is that he was saying that um, in these, he knows from second hand or even certainly first hand that these committees, where Google was complaining about how big the library is and they want to make it smaller. But that Google and Microsoft are the companies who asked for those original features to begin with in the big in the like standard libraries of C++ and making C++ bigger and bigger. My view is like, well, they do that on purpose. They do it on purpose. And they do it on purpose because it means not many other people can implement those compilers anymore. You have to use um, the Clang. You have to use GCC or, or MSVC or maybe the Intel compiler if you want to use C++. There are, at best, four C++ compilers in the world. C compilers? Any man and his dog who's de who can do a compiler before could write a C compiler in a week. And I mean a proper decent one in a week. Maybe it's not got optimizations or anything to it, but you can make one. Make a C++ compiler without any optimizations? I don't even think it's possible, to be honest with you nowadays. Because even though there's a standard and specification for C++, which isn't really there, it's like so many different documents spread over many things and thousands and thousands of pages, probably hundreds of thousands now, probably. Um, effectively, we just base the compiler on that. We don't worry about the specification. We just use what compiler and just deal with that because each compiler deals with the language slightly differently. So in that case, it's kind of making things difficult. And the carbon language, to a certain extent, I'm not saying it is, it isn't actually, but to a certain extent, it looks like you're still being wed with the C++ toolchain and keeping into it. Now, it may be just, what I'm saying, the real thing is they've just got a massive sunken cost and they'd love to get away from it. They'd love, many of them used to love, by the sounds of it, just want to use Rust. And they cannot use Rust, especially since Rust at the present time does not have a C++ interface to it. So it cannot easily import C++ code unless you 
wrap it in like C or something like that's what we do in general for Embergen. Um it's easy, easier in general because we just we prefer the more imperative procedural approach much more C like we're not really big C++ lovers um, but this is the weird thing is, as you can probably test for the video like who is this language for it seems to me that the vast majority of programmers who are looking for an alternative for C++ carbonate isn't that isn't for them it really is not for them like they could they maybe okay if they want better safety look for rust if they want something better for game development and application look for odin or maybe some other languages out there again like zig is another one out there but it, it isn't like i'm struggling to who know who this is for and i, I don't know it is a bit bewildering to me um, there are also many other criticisms with this in general, like it's built on top of um, LLVM because it has to interrupt with the C++. So effectively, it's an extension to C++ in that regard, which means, again, you've got all of that baggage. I downloaded the compiler onto my Linux machine and built it on my Windows at the moment because it's how the camera is set up to. And the Hello World took me 60 seconds to build and run. My colleague got it for 38 seconds on his more powerful CPU. No, this is just bad. I'd rather program in C++ if compile times are going to be that bad. Um, and by the way, that was an optimized build for the compiler. That wasn't optimized. Um, so something's going on here. But there's so many oddities about this language, which I, I am seriously trying to figure out who is this for, because it doesn't. It seems like they're trying to be like, well, pe people like the general idea of C++, right? So let's just imp improve it slightly. Like, what if people want an alternative to C++? The only reason they use it is because it's the only tool that they can use, not because they agree with the philosophy of it. Now, I agree with them. People got people screaming in the comments right now, going like, well, some of us can't rewrite our code bases. I'm like, I'm not telling you to rewrite anything. What we need for our tooling system is just better ways of integrating foreign languages. Like, Odin's really simple with its foreign system. We can import C stuff quite easy like okay here's binding to a c library or foreign code very easily put all the nice foreign um import stuff in there as well and it deals with all the linking for you as well like you don't even have to have linking flags because the foreign import system does it for you automatically um so build systems in odin even for embergen which is a very complex thing are as simple as odin build dot where dot is the current directory Th that's it but this is another thing with carbon. It just seems now you've added another thing, complication to your build system as well. Like you've now got to build the carbon stuff alongside the C++ stuff and probably generate that new carbon headers that had to come out to get from the C++ side. And you're making your development even more complicated to do this. So you've got all these weird things where the things that many developers who hate C++ a lot, you're not fixing. You're probably making it worse. Um, and... Yeah, I, I don't understand. But again, it's Rene, it's one of those things where I just disagree with him on the, again, those two points. Was saying, like, I don't think, I don't mind having new languages, but yes, it's, it's, it's an issue where loads of Google languages out there. That's not always a good sign. Even if, like, someone like Go, Go is kind of the exception to this. Even though it's a Google language, it's really a Bell Labs language. Because <laughs> you've got Rob Pike, Robert Griezmann, Ken Thompson, and oh, I apologize. I'm forgetting his name. It'll come to me in a minute. Don't worry. Um, I apologize. I'm all for their names anyway. Yeah, but it, like they're, they're the they're the Bell Labs chaps. They're the Plan Nine chaps. Of course, they that they were very different. And I'm very big grateful of Go. I think it's a very well designed language and it's got very good ideas to it. There were f I have many criticisms of it, of it as well, by the way. Um, like I have criticisms of my own language. I have criticisms of everything because I, you have to know what the trade offs were. And I was like, oh, I wish I did it this way or did it this way, and I can't on other reasons. It's all about trade offs, obviously. But again, to go back to the Rene thing, I, I just think that. It's not a bad idea for creating new languages. I have no, I have no issue with this. I actually don't mind it. But you cannot improve the tool set if the foundations are bad. That's my short answer of it. I think C++, we need to try and get away from it. And if you are trying to use these other libraries that are written in C++, either try and bind it, wrap it in C, and then use the C interface from whatever language you want, or Just try and find alternatives if you can. But sometimes you have this problem. If you're starting a new project, then it's quite easy to not have this issue, but it's clearly these maintaining these big behemoths already 
but these behemoth monolithic um, code bases, and like you're already in problems, adding another language to it is not going to help you, I don't think, at all. Um, and I, I, this is for me. I, I, I wish the good luck with Carbon Chaps, but to me, it does not seem appealing. It, regardless if you've had my own language, it's it's not appealing. It does not seem to be um, fixing many of the big gripes I had with C and C++. Um, it's, but I was I, I'm, I will be admit most of my projects I could we write new projects from scratch, but we're building up all the libraries obviously so we can generate our new stuff like. Django effects, we've got our own UI libraries, our own graphics libraries, we have many things built on top that then we can use, but that's it in kernel code base. And I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of a good way of putting this, but sometimes the the behemoths of the libraries that we already got in C, maybe we shouldn't be keep using them. Honestly. Do we really need to keep them? Uh, or maybe it's the especially if at Google they've they're, they've got their own curse like yes we're now making it so hard that everyone else can't do it but now we've made it so hard for ourselves that we hate it maybe maybe um same with apple same with google same with all these big corporations in general google uh, microsoft apple whatever um i don't know sorry i was gonna be but yeah i, I recommend people check the language out anyway um to make your own opinion on the matter, obviously. And if it seems like the perfect language for you, then great. Remember, it's still experimental and there's still a lot of development. I have many personal issues with it in terms of design. Um, but it, it is... Um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a weird language, is the best way of putting it. And I am literally just saying... I'm, I'm not even talking about the syntax or the semantics today, really. Other than... You've just built on top of C++ with a new syntax, effectively, and maybe some other constraint systems part of your, like, interface system, which I don't think is a huge improvement. That's what I'm saying, if it makes any sense. So thank you for listening today, and I um, hope you have a nice day. So again, make sure to, as I was saying accidentally last time video, to like that smash button, because not uh, YouTube stuff, whatever, <laughs> and have a wonderful day.